Sheridan. Engaged, enriched, empowered, the new special needs adult in Hong Kong. Good afternoon, friends, family, and TEDx viewers. In the next 15 minutes, I'd like to share with you some history, perspectives, and experience in the special needs arena, particularly in Hong Kong. The underlying theme of these remarks is looking forward, the progress of special needs in Hong Kong. At this moment, I'm going to steal a comment from Ted Thomas's book, I Was Misquoted. One of his favorite interviewers for more than 20 years got away with only three questions in any interview. First, so tell me what happened. Second, and then. And third, what about the future? So this will be my framework going forward. My wife and I grew up in Winnipeg, Canada. When she was still my girlfriend, we often saw a lady driving around our neighborhood with a young man in the front seat. She would park at different times, in different places. We observed they never got out of the car together. We guessed her passenger had Down syndrome. Even today, we occasionally mention his name and realize this young man simply had nothing to do and no program to follow. Fast forward, but more than 25 years ago, our daughter, who is a special needs young woman with developmental delay, joined the Riding for Disabled program at a local stables. One of the first young persons I noticed there was a young man, bent over on a horse, with his face virtually on the horse's mane. I thought he must have had some serious spine problem. As a special needs child, with supposed severe and unknown disabilities, his parents had kept him hidden under a sink. It was years later we found out that he had no mental disability whatsoever. I bring up these two random stories as reminders of what existed in the past. Youngsters with Down syndrome, autism, and so on, were either kept at home, even hidden away, instead of being given the opportunity to join the community in which they lived and lead a life with real quality. Our family moved to Hong Kong when our daughter was five. The headmaster of Bradbury Junior School, Bob Brown, asked to have the special needs unit in his school. He was adamant that his students understand that not all are created equal. Our daughter spent five happy years at Bradbury, then moved to the Jockey Club Sarah Rowe School, a special needs school established by the English Schools Foundation for English-speaking students ages six to 19 years with moderate, severe, or complex learning difficulties. When she and a small group of her classmates left the Sarah Rowe School, as they were over 19, they had nowhere to go and nothing to do. But I had the answer. I called my buddy Steve, who managed a large US bank, and asked if Laurie could work at his organization in Central, maybe do some filing or some other simple tasks. Then the penny dropped. What if a file were called Asia Pacific Investments? Does it go under Asia? Maybe investments. I bring up this simple scenario and realize that our own daughter would be set up to fail, and perhaps even criticized by our fellow workmates. We did not know anything about supported employment, where a special needs student goes into the workplace, but with a coach as they learn to do the simple task. So a small group of parents got together, and two of us then wrote Governor Chris Patton, describing the need for English school, English speaking special needs students in Hong Kong. Governor Patton read our proposal, passed it to the head of social welfare, and in a short period of time, we had received enough funding to hire a special needs center, a teacher, and were allocated some classroom space for a new center. I'm reminded of day one, 1993, with a new teacher looking at her new students, plus a donation of cookers, refrigerators and a washing machine, with no places to plug them in, of course. But there were four to five young adults who now had a program to fill their days and to start being included in the Hong Kong community. And then, six years ago, we opened our first social enterprise, the Nest Coffee Shop, on the grounds of St. John's Cathedral, a 170-year-old Anglican Cathedral in central Hong Kong. Not long after, we opened Cafe 8 above the Maritime Museum, a popular 65-seat restaurant looking out over the city center. The Nesbitt Center, or the TNC, plus its social enterprises, 
now employ 26 full and part-time able-bodied staff, along with 25 part-time special needs staff at our two social enterprises. We've just opened a third social enterprise, a small coffee shop on Nathan Road, part of St. Andrew's Church. This brings us to an important part of the presentation. I chose the title, Engaged, Enriched, and Empowered, as these words embrace the mission and goals of the Center. Centuries ago, churches and their outbuildings were places for travelers in the UK and Europe to find refreshment or even a place to sleep. With the encouragement of the clergy at St. John's Cathedral, a well-placed telephone call to the buildings department, funding from a local charity and a friendly contractor, the Nest Coffee Shop was born in 2013. What the Nest symbolized for our students was self-worth and, yes, friendship, plus employment skills and community outreach. Regular coffee buyers from central offices and the cathedral congregation created new relationships with our staff. And there were new seeds for a positive, unintended consequence. Several of our high-functioning autistic students gradually learned from able-bodied baristas how to become baristas themselves. What about other high-support needs students at the center? I'll raise the story of Andrew, not his real name, who looked like you and me, but could only react to the most basic of stimulation, sound and light, as his mental capacity was that of a two-year-old. So he came to the center every day, moved into a designated quiet room where he could listen to music and react to different colors of light. Even more special, we have had the teaching skills of Kumi Masaguna, a drum and percussionist teacher and performer. She describes some of her work. People of all ages, from all backgrounds and walks of life, sit together to create a harmonious rhythm with different drums. A drum jam is a wonderful symbol of what connects us all. We sometimes forget the power of rhythms and sounds for the less able. I participated in a session recently at our center 25th anniversary celebration. I found myself beating drums, smiling, laughing, and sadly, singing. But you can imagine what this type of program brought to a young man like Andrew. The center students also spend months planning for a December Christmas show. We have high-functioning students as MCs, but equally important are those with very simple skills who play a tambourine or maracas. Such inclusion gives high support students enjoyment, stimulation, and yes, smiles on their faces. We are also able to promote and employ special needs students within our center. Evan, currently taking a university accounting program, is now one of the center's accounting staff and a full-time employee. Simon, autistic and trilingual, works as a telephone receptionist and messenger for the center. External activities for special needs in Hong Kong. A quiz. How many museums are there in Hong Kong? Well, there are 55, and our students have been to more than half. We also go camping in the fall, in Sai Kung in the New Territories, and we have recently teamed up with Outward Bound. This charity manages hiking and sailing programs, which most of us know, but has recently teamed up with the Ebenezer School for the Blind and provided an overnight hike for Sight Challenge. TNC has now partnered with Outward Bound, who are creating a customized hiking and outdoors program for the center. Another opportunity available to center students is the Sailability Program. Sailability Hong Kong provides the opportunity for anyone with a disability, intellectual or physical, to learn to sail or have a water-based experience. The program is open to stroke or burn victims, amputees, and so on. Sailability Hong Kong's organization has grown at a New Territories-based yacht club to almost 25 special-purpose sailboats. Even those in wheelchairs can be winched into a boat, taken out to the open water to feel wind in their faces. My daughter travels with another center student from the Airport Express, changes twice on the Mass Transit Railway, and boards a minibus to reach the yacht club. Later that same day, she repeats the exercise and adds in a taxi, 
and her friend boards a ferry. This sense of independence is extremely valuable for them because they join the rest of Hong Kong and are simply part of the community. And what about the future? We found over time that our students continue to need educational skills in the workplace. As an example, we found many of our enthusiastic uh, students working in social enterprises were unable to make a reservation or provide customer service information. We then commenced giving them business English courses in the evening. Our, play, our parents have often asked if their adult children could attain a degree or a diploma. We will spend the next several years designing e-learning courses in partnership with the university that are appropriate for special needs, including accounting and business courses, and that can lead to a specific designation. Self-employment. Our center director has now teamed up to spend the next several years designing e-learning courses in partnership with the university that are appropriate for special needs, including accounting and business courses, and that can lead to a specific designation. Self-employment. Our center director has now teamed up with the design section of Hong Kong Poly University, who have created several mock-ups of coffee carts, which can be easily stored and moved. A cart can provide our high-functioning barista, Alan, with his own business, using Nesbitt Center supply chains, and he may soon show up with a cart at office building lobbies nearby. A new group of special needs individuals is now emerging from Hong Kong families. From the South China Morning Post in August this year, last year more than 600,000 mainland Chinese began studying abroad, taking the overall total of the nation's overseas students to just over 1.5 million. As well, more than 32,000 students from Hong Kong are also studying abroad. Returnees of Chinese origin with English skills, moving back to both China and Hong Kong, will increase dramatically and bring with them special needs students. A center like ours can partner with welfare departments in both Hong Kong and China, talk to other NGOs and social enterprises, and be prepared to both share knowledge and business models to assist this new cohort of young adults who will need support. I will close my remarks with observations from my own family and our daughter, as she has been part of the Jockey Club Sarah Rose School and the Nesbitt Center for many years. Here are a selection of activities, events, job placements, and programs that she has both attended in the past 15 years or continues with today. Travel with classmates on a cruise ship to Vietnam, worked as a dog walker on the peak, and helped at the SPCA retail shop. Traveled with a team from the center to Chiang Mai, where she and a small group helped paint schools for a minority Thai tribe. Works as a cafe assistant at two of our social enterprises on a three-day-per-week basis. Plays soccer with the Crusaders, a special needs football team coached at the Hong Kong Football Club. Sails most Saturdays with friends in the sailability program. Participates in dance, cooking, life skills on a weekly basis. Has participated for 10 years in TNC residential programs, sleeping at the center's various residences, also provided by the government. Created and sold art at a visual art center and participated in several center art exhibitions at the cathedral and our center. Been an MC at the center's annual Christmas party. So for what you have heard in the past 15 minutes, whether a reference to a wheelchair drum presentation, learning how to make latte, or visiting the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Museum, Nesbitt Center adult students are moving forward, engaged in the community, have lives that are enriched, and are empowered in Hong Kong society. Thank you for listening.